Having looked at the bubble, insertion, and merge sort algorithms, this video will look at the quicksort, counting sort, and radix sort. One of the most common and interesting sorting algorithms is the quicksort. The quicksort algorithm is conceptually simple at the highest levels of abstraction, but there are several important details to get right. Crucially, its runtime performance depends on the first decision the algorithm makes about the input data. The runtime can be big omega n log n, but there are circumstances in which the so-called quicksort can take big omega n squared time to run. The quicksort is another recursive sorting algorithm. Like the merge sort, its recursive step assumes that two portions of the sequence can be sorted and then combined. Unlike the merge sort, however, this partitioning is not based on the various elements' original positions in the sequence, but rather on their values. We start by choosing an element called the pivot. If we're very lucky, or very clever, this pivot will be the median value in the sequence, so half of the values being sorted will be less than the pivot, and half will be more than the pivot. Assuming we've chosen a good pivot, and we'll come back to the consequences of choosing poorly, the first job of the quick sort is to partition the sequence into three parts, values below the pivot, values equal to the pivot, and values above the pivot. Then, we can recursively sort the small values part and the large values part. Unlike the merge sort, we don't need any temporary arrays to hold values being merged, we just need to be careful about how we move the small and large values around in the sequence, and we can do all of our operations in place. Assuming that we've chosen a good pivot, that is, a pivot which is the median of the values being sorted, the sequence will divide into two partitions of equal size, and the complexity analysis will be exactly the same as that of the merge sort. If we choose a bad pivot, however, such as always picking the first element of an already sorted sequence, we will do order n operations to walk through the sequence and confirm it's already partitioned into subsequences of size 0 and size n minus 1. Then, recurse down n minus 1 times to do it all over again. In that worst case situation, the quick sort will take n squared operations to do nothing. So, it's clearly important that we choose a good pivot. We could calculate the true median using an algorithm called quickselect, created by the same author as quicksort. But that's another order in operation to do at each level of the recursion, and we can approximate it using a constant time approach, picking three elements and taking the median of those. In practice, the first, middle, and last elements work well enough to prevent the pernicious pre-sorted performance problem. The counting sort or bucket sort, is a sorting algorithm for use with small integers that actually has a linear runtime. In this very simple sorting algorithm, we keep an array of counting buckets as large as the largest value we expect to encounter. We iterate through the sequence and count the number of occurrences of each value, storing the counts in the counting buckets. Finally, we iterate over the counting buckets and put the values back into the sequence. If the value in bucket i is j, we put j copies of the value i into the sorted sequence. A related algorithm is the radix sort, which performs a bucket sort on arbitrarily large integers using a limited number of buckets. In this algorithm, integers are sorted one digit at a time, units, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. The radix sort can work with any radix, decimal 10, hexadecimal 16, etc., and is linear in the number of elements being sorted times the number of digits in the largest number, which is the logarithm of the largest value. So that's the quick sort, counting or bucket sort, and the radix sort.